Hi, Dr. Bradshaw here, functional medicine patients. It's time to talk about shoulder issues, particularly if you have things like bursitis, or you have um, an old labrum tear, or you have um, so a rotator cuff tear, or you just have tight muscles in and around your shoulder due to an old injury, poor posture, lack of exercise, etc. We're gonna talk about how to stretch out your shoulder in a very big way today, all right? Let's talk a little bit anatomically though about how the shoulder actually works. So if you look at the shoulder, take away the skin and muscles, you will see the arm bone comes up and it creates a fist type ending that they call the ball. This is a ball and socket joint, okay? So the ball is that forearm go, sorry, the uh, upper arm going up into the shoulder. And at the end is this cap. It's the kind of the ball part of the shoulder blade. That's how the arm and the shoulder are arranged, right? And so when you raise your arm up like this, your ball and socket, your ball will rotate underneath this way towards the camera going up like this. It kind of rotates up underneath that ball. That's why it's a ball. So that ball can rotate, right? Same thing if you were to reach the arm back behind you, that has to then rotate back this way. So it comes up underneath there, that ball rotates underneath that socket. Okay, so you need to be able to have that motion. Same thing if your arm is out to the side like this, and you do this motion, you need to be able to have that ball and socket come across like this, and then rotate like this. So anyway, you get the idea. It's a three-dimensional joint. And so we need to stretch it in three different dimensions. So the first way you're going to do it, you're going to get up against the wall. This is an open door frame right here, just so you can see this. Okay. So you want to make sure you get up against the wall. So your hand to your uh, elbow is flush against the door. You're going to take the leg. You're going to step through. Okay. It's almost like you're going to walk through the door, but your arm got stuck. From here, as you step through, you're going to take your hand and you're going to go back this way, rotating back in this way. So I'm actually not even far enough through the door. I need to step through a little bit further and then rotate back like this and touch the door. Go back and touch the door. And you're literally going to be taking that ball and socket joint and be rotating it back and back where you started. Back this way, back where you started. Okay, so we're going to do that in this direction 10 times. Then you're going to flip it and you're going to take the arm to the elbow flush against the door like this, okay? You're gonna start right here, stepping through the door again. My leg is gonna step through the door, forearms against the wall, I'm gonna take my hand here and I'm gonna go that way with it. So you can see me go this way, back against the wall, and this way, back against the wall. And you're gonna do that 10 times. And again, you're just taking the ball and socket the opposite way this time, going this way and rotating it and getting that motion in there. This takes the ligaments and tendons and the capsule and gets it all kind of stretching and moving in certain directions. That's really important. Some muscles need to be locked out while some muscles move, and then some muscles need to be locked out here while other muscles move, and that's the point. We're actually getting all kinds of structures to move past one another with these motions, okay? So that is one thing. Repeat those 10 times, right? And then do three cycles of that. So this, Go back and forth 10 times, this, 10 times, that's one cycle, do three cycles of that. And then you're going to use the door frame doorway again, but this time you're going to grab on top of the door like this. So you're really going to put your hand up and go on top of the door frame with your fingertips so you can hang down. If you're not tall enough, get a stool, stand up on the stool so you can reach this and then bend your knees so you can hang down. You wanna get this arm hanging down. I sh you should feel tugging underneath your arm like this. This is gonna take that ball and socket joint. It's gonna move it in this direction, and now we're actually gonna rotate it like this. And so what you're gonna do while you're grabbing the top of the door frame, you're gonna hang down like this, and then you're gonna spin. Your hand's not gonna move. Everything's gonna be locked up top. You're gonna to spin clockwise, counterclockwise, and you're going to feel a tremendous stretch going around the inside of your shoulder as your socket is literally rotating in like this. It's a stretch you're probably not very used to. In fact, you may not be able to get very far as you hang down here. That might be good enough. 
any sort of twisting is too much, that's okay. We want to get that, you want to have your body weight pulling down as you hold and you get that stretch. You get this ball and socket kind of distracting this way. And that's where then we get that stretch and we start to rotate it. But that comes secondarily, so don't force it, okay? But again, go we'll back and forth, spinning 10 times each direction. If you can't spin, just hold that there for a count of 10, let go, shake the arm out, do it again, hang for 10 seconds, repeat that three times. Uh, that is, all of that is one cycle. So again, if you're really dealing with some shoulder rehab that needs to be done, morning, afternoon, evening, doing this stretch. All right, enjoy.